Now that we've seen how easy it is to convert a purchase order into a receiver to increase your inventory, let's look at how easy it is to now go from a receiver all the way down to a single asset record for either rental, checkout, or assignment. To start, we'll go to the receiver dashboard inside of WIMS. We'll click plus to create a new active receiver and enter in our standard information. Make sure to choose your stocking location correctly as this will determine where the serial numbers and assets ultimately reside in the system when they are created. Once the receiver is created, we can create line items. I'm choosing here a serialized battery smoke detector. The system can be configured to automatically generate serial numbers for you when serialized items are received or allow you to manually enter in your own serial numbers. If you have a spreadsheet from your vendor or distributor that contains the line item amounts or the serial numbers, these can be imported using the native CRM import tool. Now that we've added the line items, we'll go ahead and post the receiver as normal. And now we'll move to the WIMS inventory tile. WIMS inventory, of course, contains all the detailed records of any of the subcategories of your inventory. In this case, we'll look at the serial numbers and see that now we have the newly created serial numbers based on the receiving as well as some previous serial numbers from earlier in the morning. To convert these to assets, we can simply highlight all of the rows and run the workflow to create the necessary records. Now this will take some time to run. So while it does, let's navigate back to the dashboard view to look at assets inside of WIMS. Here we can see the newly created assets based on the serialized items we received just a moment ago. This dashboard also gives you a breakdown of assets by location, where they're currently being stored, as well as your assets by category. If you have any assigned assets, whether that's a rental, a checkout, or a long-term assignment, they will appear here. And if you have any assets that are currently in transfer between locations, they will appear here on the right. Now, assets can be grouped multiple ways in the system. Here we give you several predefined categorizations by assets in transfer, active, assigned, or using the detailed service information on the asset, those that are overdue or almost ready for service. Let's open up one of these records to see exactly what an asset contains. Here you can see we give you a link back to the parent product as well as the individual asset number. If these are created with the automatic workflow, the asset number will be the same as the serial number. On the right, we have service date information to track your warranty and maintenance history on individual assets. And in the center, we provide you information to track this current salvage cost and depreciation of any given asset. There are several types of depreciations, and you can even look up predefined depreciation properties to set specific percentages on individual assets. The lower right contains information about what this asset is eligible to be used for, whether that's assignment or transfer for fixed assets, and if there are any current users or owners of the asset, either internally or out in the field. If we go back to the main asset view, we can see the different asset categories. Let's open up an asset kit. Much like before, this asset has a link back up to a parent product and the standard information we saw previously. However, if we drill down into the component asset tab, we can see two other assets related to this parent asset. When an assignment or a checkout of the asset is done on this wireless doorbell, these two assets will automatically be checked out as well. 